Today on Encounters, we're going to be talking a little bit about anxiety. How many of you out there have felt a little anxiety? Now, come on, admit it. We all have at certain times. But uh, we're going to be discussing in the Word of God um, in Genesis, the 21st chapter, around the 15th verse. You know, anxiety, ladies, it, it can rip you apart sometimes. Um, you can just feel like you're at uh, death's door and uh, things are just falling apart. And today, my guests are Carol Dollar and Farah Keddy. Welcome, ladies, once again. So Thank honored you. to have you with us. Thank you for having us. Uh, uh, Excited about this because I've been getting uh, uh, several emails um, about several ladies that uh, you know have anxiety issues, and we all have. You know, and in this story in Genesis the 21st chapter about, about Hagar, she has such anxiety that she can't see what's right in front of her. Mm. How many of us have been there before? Mm. Sometimes we get so um, upset or uh, anxiety that we can't we, we can't recognize the door that is open, that God is open, or something that's right there in front of you. you know, I can be right here full of anxiety and uh, know that i got a scripture in mind, <laughs> but and it can be right here open to it, and I could not see it. That's how we can't see some things sometimes. So, Isn't it true, Sister Faye? True. It blinds us. That anxiety will blind us. Yes, it will blind us. I'm going to read this scripture right quick, and we'll discuss it. And I want you ladies to just to jump right in. As I said before, it is in Genesis, the 21st chapter, and I'll begin at the 15th verse. It may be just a little bit lengthy reading, but I want to make sure I get this in. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. She sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. This mother loves her child so much. We've been there, haven't we? Yes. You love your child so much. But when you see them at death's door and when, when all this anxiety creeps in, we can't, uh, we can't see what God's trying to do. We can't see the bigger mm. picture. And we can't see the life-giving waters That's that God it. has placed right in us. Isn't that true That's today, it. Carol? Oh, that is so true. So many people are having more than anxiety. They're having depression. Yes. And personally, when I get to feeling a little uneasy mm -hmm. and, and my peace is just not, I know I need to take a Sabbath. Amen. I need to Amen. Shut, shut her down. Amen. I need to get before the Lord, mm -hmm. and I need to need some healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Need a touch from the yes, heaven. Well, well uh, can, can you imagine what this child was thinking when they heard the mother crying and giving up. Oh, Can my. you imagine what? So something from the, from the child, the next verse says, And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of the heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? He already knew. He already knew, but she mm -hmm. had to voice it. Mm -mm -mm. Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. And I love this part right here. My friends, you've got to get this part in the 18th verse. It says, Arise. <laughs> I'm going to say it yes, again. Arise. Arise. Lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Oh, and yeah. God opened her eyes, and she saw the well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad to drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And you can go on through there and read that. But he said he heard the voice of the lad. Mm -hmm. But he told her to arise and to lift the child up. Praise God. You know, it was already said, I believe, before that, that he would be a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And uh, so we need to remember those problems. God doesn't uh, say one thing and do another. That's true. But when we go that through is. those trials, we tend to forget the promises of God, don't we, sometimes, Sister Faith? Yes, we do. It's so easy because we can't, with all that's coming on us and the anxiety, then it just kind of pushes back mm -hmm. what God has promised mm -hmm. us and what God has mm -hmm. said. Amen. I mean, were you, were you going to say something, Carol? Oh, that's so true. That that point that you made, that uh -huh. is a priceless truth because when we're in the storm, we forget yes. 
the precious promises unto us for protection, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Because, and she had done that. Yes. She has forgotten mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we've got to uh, bring up, uh, hold on to the promises of God. Amen. Yes. Write them up on our hearts. You know, you know what I tend to do sometimes? Um, I tend to get my Bible open and I write the promises down that's pertaining to my life. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and, mm -hmm. and I read them every morning, every day. And I, I stand up on those promises because I, sometimes we have to remind ourselves, don't we? Renew our you minds. Renew. Yes. yes, Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Praise God. And there are times, Lord, Sister Deborah, that even... Uh, I remind God, God, you have promised me in your word. It yeah. says here, God, this promise is to me, mm -hmm. even though God doesn't need reminding. Right. But I think he likes to hear from us sometimes yes. that we are well aware of what these promises yes, are. Amen. Yes. And what I see in Abraham and, and to um, this other son, he was of the seed of Abraham, mm -hmm. but through all this anxiety and even through Sarah, this he was still part of the promise of, I mean, That's right. I know that you. child was still of the seed of Abraham, yes. and God was not going to cast that child right. aside. Amen. That's right. Yeah, and there's a lot of people out there feel like they've been cast aside, whether it's by uh, family, whether it's by church, and uh uh, but he hasn't. He hasn't cast no. us aside. No. no. You just uh, hold on. Hold on. You've got to hold on and wait to see the fruition of God. Don't give up. Right. There's a lot of people that they don't get their prayers answered mm -hmm. right away, and they be they become ris really disillusioned about it. But you mm -hmm. have to remember that we have a covenant with yes, God. Yes. Amen. And amen. we have to absolutely become obedient to Amen. that covenant to get our prayers answered, That's to right. keep be in right relationship with God. But when we are, God will move heaven and hell to answer our request I believe it. and get I, us I out of these it. storms that life can bring to us. When, absolutely. When you said that, uh, I was reminded of Hebrews 11, what I call the faith chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, faith is the substance of of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But it goes down through there. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, things not seen as yet, yeah. moved with fear. Wow. You know, we've got to move with fear because uh, um, things are happening in this nation. And, uh, and if we don't start getting up and moving with the fear of God and start doing something right. about what's going on in our nation and move with the fear of God and also the love of God at the same time. Yes. And, and sending out, uh, sounding the trumpet, sending oh, the, warning, yes. the, the warning bells out. Mm. You know, I, I remember... You know, years ago, my father used to listen, watch these old westerns, and they had the old schoolhouse bell, or when church was about to start, they would ring that to bring let people know to come in mm -hmm. and stuff. A lot, uh, the church needs to stand up and rise up, mm -hmm. and by faith, Amen. sound the warning sound. Absolutely. Amen. And those uh, those that are in anxiety, when you when you have anxiety going on, you feel like you're. Uh, you're just not worth anything sometimes. Why don't you just give up? You know, I've heard the I've heard the enemy say that before. Yes, he'll attack you at that time. Yes, he will mm -hmm. because that's your weakest moment. That's right. But when those anxiety anxiety times come, we we need to learn to get into the Word of God and dig out, pull out what the Word of God says about our circumstances. Right. Doesn't the Word of God say, be anxious for nothing? nothing. Oh, boy, that's a good it, one. It, it, it's a hard one sometimes, too, isn't it? Yes, yes, it Especially is. Especially when it comes to your children or your grandchildren oh or someone that's in need. Oh, but yes. by faith. By faith. We stand and take authority in the Word of God. And, you know, I don't want anything to block me from seeing the living water. Amen. That's true. And we allow those things to happen. This is what Hagar done. She uh, she was so caught up in worry, so mm -hmm. caught up. She was ready just to give up, just to lay there, and, and she wept, and, and she was going to watch her son die. She was that anxious. Yes. 
you know what I, I saw in this, reading that part there about mm -hmm. the little child, Ishmael. Mm -hmm. God had a purpose for him and a land, mm -hmm. and there had to be a separation right. uh, of the two because they couldn't grow up and be right there in the same territory, right. so to speak, because God had set aside different plans, different plan mm -hmm. for both Most of them. That's right. Well, I, I just, you know, it makes me wonder why God heard Ishmael's prayer and uh, why Hagar got so, I believe it's the mother in her. The mother. That caused the, the anxiety um, because she was seeing right before her very eyes, mm -hmm. her child, right. you know, just dwindling away. But the, the child, I will hear cry, that was a cry from the heart. Yes. That's what I believe. And, uh, but the angel said, God has God heard, heard your prayer. Has heard. He's heard his prayer. And, uh, I believe it was speed. He removed it. The word of God says, uh, her eyes were open. Let me read that part again because I really like that. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for our eyes to be open today is what we need to pray when anxiety Amen. sets in. scales to be Yes, removed. and God opened her eyes and she saw the well of the water. water. Do you need to see the living water? Mm -hmm. Do you know who the living water is today? Amen. Where you can, are you, are you gripped today with uh, such anxiety you don't know which way to turn? Are you so gripped with anxiety you're afraid to confine anyone? Well, today God says he hears your prayer. And when we pray for him to remove the scales from our eyes, I, I, our eyes will be open so that Amen. we can see the right. truth and what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to destroy us, isn't he? Oh, Amen. Yes. But God, Anybody the God we can. serve is a living God. Amen. Amen. A victorious God, a Hallelujah. joyful God, a peaceful God, a God of victory. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right. He sure Amen. is. He's won the battle. Yes. Amen. It's finished. It's over. I, uh, well, y'all know about my son and mm -hmm. he's had two open heart surgeries, but that first time, uh, something was not working mm -hmm. right in that surgery. But I had gone to the chapel to pray. Now this was flesh of my flesh mm -hmm. and that motherly love. So I went into the chapel and I knelt in the big, huge Bible. And I said, God, it says in your word right. here, you have promised me this and I, I need you to come through with these promises right. right now. And then when I had to, the Lord told me to stand up and fight. Right. Mm -hmm. And when stand I, up. I stand yeah. up Rise and up. fight, <laughs> and I did not know it at the time, but what was happening in that open heart surgery, my son almost died mm -hmm. at that moment that I was in that, that you were chapel that. praying and I also was fighting a black entity that had entered the chapel. Oh my. And when the Lord said, stand up and fight, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, and it had to be the Lord I, it was like I was boxing and kickboxing mm -hmm. and that, and I rebuked that black death. I knew it was a spirit death, of death spirit. It's spirit of death. It even took almost on a human form. Oh, dear me. And I kept praying Amen. in the name of Jesus, my son will live and not die. And that thing finally backed out. You would think that they can't come into a chapel. They come into our churches. Oh, yes, And they I'm do. telling you, it, it just... You got that right. Uh, yeah. But then when they told me later, they almost lost my son. Mm. It was at the very time that, that the Lord... Good. You were doing warfare. Warfare Amen. gave me the power. Mm. I might be a little short woman, but I'm telling you many times <laughs> that devil knows that when I raise my fist at him, I'm yes. the victor you through the business. Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. I have the power That's right. to out power him. That's the right. Name Amen. Woo, well, hallelujah. the, the <laughs> answer to the problem is right before our very eyes. Yes, it is. Right here yes, in the Word is. of God. Uh, when you get into the Word of God and you soak in those promises and you take your authority yes. that the Lord has given us. Mm -hmm. He said on the cross, and I've say, I'll say said this before and I'll probably say it again, <laughs> it is finished. It is mm -hmm. finished. Quit battling. 
because it's already been taken care of. The devil's already defeated. Take your authority in the word of God. Take your authority. When that anxiety feeling comes, you, if you just can't do it within yourself and you can't just say a way out, you call a brother or sister in Christ or a family member that, that is a child of God and you get a hold of them and have them pray with Amen. you. That's what we're here for. Amen. Amen. It's to lift one another up and to encourage them and, and rebuke that devouring spirit of anxiety because anxiety will cause you to doubt yourself and oh, have yes. self-doubt most, most mm. definitely. But uh, in I've seen when the uh, spirit of anxiety is upon someone, there's a suicidal spirit. It comes in, it comes in pairs. Mm -hmm. uh, all these spirits come in and think like that, you know, that death, a spirit of death that came right. in was coming in. And, you know, that spirit of death probably thought he's going to scare you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. He but he did. didn't know who he was dealing that's with, did he? It. Amen. He picked <laughs> the wrong one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And that's what I, uh, where it says, rise up. Rise up. We've got to rise up. Are you rising up today, my friends? Are you rising up and lifting up the banner high? Are you rising up when the spirit of anxiety attacks you? Yes. Uh, are you rising up with the word of God? Raise this banner high. Raise the price and say, it is He's, written. It is written. Uh, hey, throw the word at the devil. That's right. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Anybody ever seen that... Uh, that video is years and years ago. I believe it's when uh, Karen Wheaton first started. Uh, uh, she's getting ready to uh, go to work, whatever, and the enemy keeps coming at her, and, and she's, uh, uh, she, th she holds this up. She keeps walking. The devil keeps walking up to her, and every time she goes like that singing that song, every time she goes like that with the word of God, the sword, the, the enemy falls to the it's ground. Just... He tries to get back up and then puts it back down and everything. Oh, yes. And we've got to trust in God that his word's that powerful. It is. And uh, we Definitely. can be victorious. This is right. our sword. Yes. Amen. We Amen. need to learn to use Amen. his word as the sword. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when, uh, when I'm doing warfare for myself or for others, mm -hmm. the way I do it, there's power in the blood. Mm hmm I address Satan and I say, I come to you in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ on the authority of the sh Amen. shed blood of Jesus that was shed for me, and I send him on his way. Amen. Kick him to the curb, as my mama used to say. Praise God. I've, I've literally seen her open the back door and, and make a kick and kick him out. And yeah. kick him out. You're not welcome mm -hmm. in my house, praise mm -hmm. God. Your mother was something, wasn't I, she? Yes, she was. I have a great heritage. I really do. Yes. But uh, and she would always follow that up. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Oh, Holy that's Spirit, beautiful. you're welcome Amen. here. And uh, it's, there's just so many things that the enemy tries to attack us with. It's not just anxiety. There's just mm -mm. so many things. So many. Because I believe the reason that, that the enemy does it is because he knows what is within you. Right. And he doesn't want you to come to the realization that you have such power. And once, uh, once you place it under the blood, it, it's gone. It's mm -hmm. a done deal. It's, well, it's already been placed in, under the blood. But you know, I tell people often, not, pray for your children before they go to school. Plead the blood of yes. Jesus over them. Yes. Because you, know, you just don't know what's going to happen in, in the schools anymore. Amen. On your jobs anywhere. That taking authority is so, we may, might already need to take a, uh, do a study on that. Yes. How to uh, proclaim and take the authority. Sometimes just speaking it, speaking it's just not enough. You've got to believe it. got to believe it. That's it. it From deep got, within. Yes. Not just you verbally. you truly, got. truly got to believe it. you got to believe once you speak that word, it's going to send that dart to, or straight to the enemy and knock him to the ground, mm -hmm. and he can't get back up. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when... Uh, when the Lord comes and gets his bride, and you know Amen. he's gonna, he's going to re realize. Evidently, he has amnesia. He doesn't know who that comes <laughs> <I like that. laughs> because he keeps coming and attacking us. But that's his job. That's what he's supposed it to is. do. It. Amen. <laughs> but you but know, Sister Deborah, what I see too is that he knows what we're going to gain because he lost it. Yes. I mean, he was the most beautiful angel there. He had power over the all the other angels. He gave it up. He gave it up. And he brought a third of the angels. Mm -hmm. When he was cast out, they came with him. But he knows what we're going to gain. Mm -hmm. But yet he knows what he's lost. Right. He doesn't want us to have it. Mm -hmm. He's real. He, he's real. He, 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 he likes definitely. to laugh at us like you were saying, to mm -hmm. make yes. us worry about yes. something. Right. But, you know, I got, uh, I got a lot of victory over that when I said, 
one day I was worrying about something, I thought, the Holy Spirit let me know. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? You're praying to the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Worry is praying to the devil. Honey, mm -hmm. I quit. I mm -hmm. got myself under control. I started confessing the word. And exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. That's Speak it with I, authority to yes. the devil and, and just say, hey. Cast the care on him. Yeah, devil, that's the end of the subject. I don't want to hear no more about it. You're not welcome here. Get out of my thoughts. And we need to make sure that we keep that armor of God on at mm -hmm. all, times. all times. You see, he, uh, the enemy likes to think that, you know, well, that armor's nothing. But my, my word says different. Mm. And my word says yes. that it gives us authority. It protects us if we will use it. If we'll use you know, it, uh, yes. You know, before uh, he gave up his position in heaven right. willingly, uh, he could have, you know, had power to do, I mean, the, the, you know, the angels are given power to do things, and but no, he wanted more. He wanted more. He, he was, wanted he to be self, worshipped himself. Right. He was selfish. Yes. Uh, but I want to be a part of something that's bigger than myself. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, you hear that going around, and it's so true, those words. Uh, let us pray, uh, Lord, let, it, let me be a part of something that's bigger than Absolutely. myself. Uh, strengthen me to do boldly what you have told me to do, boldly. what you have planted within me, and remove, rip out that anxiety, uh, whatever's called the root cause of the anxiety. Let's uh, rip that out and curse it and let it dry, dry up and go away. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, Amen. you have encouraged me so many times because regardless of what happens, and you've had your challenges, nothing stops you, Deborah. No. Well, you stay right on on I mark. Feel, well, I, I appreciate God. those words, but it's all God. I know it's that. All, it's all God. And, uh, you know, he gave his best, so mm -hmm. why shouldn't we give our best? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I'll forever be saying that. Um, yes, there are times, you know, that God, we need to sit back and rest a while and take a sabbatical or, and do this or do that. But during those times, a sabbatical of rest, he downloads into yes, us a he fresh does. He anointing, does. doesn't he? Yes, you ever, have you ever witnessed that? Yes, Where he downloads wonderful. a fresh anointing. Mm -hmm. His word is fresh every day. I every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. No leftovers with the Lord. It's Amen. Only That's wild. right. No crumbs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. It's the best. My husband once uh, compared it to... Um, uh, when you come uh, from out of the world, uh, out of the darkness into the light, it's like there's a difference between blowing and steak. Yes. <laughs> so, of course, he compared it to food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, we often do that sometimes. Right. We, we compare it to things in the natural so people can understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how Jesus taught. He taught in parables and stories. Yes, he well, did. maybe you need to pray for me because I love blowing <laughs> Oh, Carol, you make me laugh. Make me laugh. Laugh. Laughter is good, especially when you have anxiety. Uh, Amen. You know, hey, just laugh at the devil. Oh, yes. Just laugh at the yes. devil. And you say, yeah, yes. tell me, you think you've got power over me? And then just start laughing. And again, say, it is written. It, it is, is written. written. Praise God. And then there are times, too, when this load comes. There are times when I've had to say, Lord, I can't handle this. I right. give it to you. Amen. I give it to Cast you. Cast it all over. Yes. And then I too, I'll tell myself, this too shall pass. That's right. Amen. This too shall pass. Amen. Even just a few words can encourage us mm -hmm. to let go and let God. Yes. Mm -hmm. even, even a song, it, uh, you know, uh, a praise and worship song can lift me up and it can cause yes. something to pass. Oh, yes. You know, if I'm at home by myself and I'm in a, and I'm feeling, you know, just tired and weary, I can put a song in of worship, and before I know it, I'm just lifting my hands up and just praising the Lord. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I just feel the need to just really pray and pray out loud. And I, I just go walking up down the halls. I walk all around the house mm -hmm. just, just praising God because I don't want to to be the type of Christian that on, the only contact I have with him is when I need something. When you need something. You know, he wants to hear from us. Mm -hmm. you know, he does. I, there are moments that I, that I just say, okay, Lord, what would you like to talk about today? <laughs> That's yeah? good. And, uh, That's I, good. and I'm, I'm honest in saying that. And, and be patient enough not to wait, not keep looking at your watch. You know, mm -hmm. Okay, Lord. You keep like they it do. Over. 
church members and, yeah. and preachers preaching. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's just um, <laughs> our flesh gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. I remember services in church, Sister Faye, where it, it was nothing, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. oh, and stuff. Yeah. And oh, two, I've, I've been in services where uh, someone would scoot to the edge of the thing and dangle the keys to let the pastor know it's time to cut it mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been on both ends and stuff. But, you know, we serve a God. We, you know, if you cut the Holy Ghost off, uh, you know, something's going to happen. You won't receive nothing to begin with. You won't re if you were praying for a healing and, and uh, you're at service and, and you, you had been praying for a healing and you get, uh, you get a little anxious and you want to go ahead and leave, you know, I need to be somewhere by certain time, right. you, you're going to miss you it. Could miss you're going to miss yes. it because that's the precise moment that the Lord could come in and give you your miracle. Amen. Amen. There was times when I was pastoring that... Uh, I would hear the some man would put his hands in the pocket and uh -huh. start rattling the keys, uh -huh. and I just said, just and it had to be the Lord that you might as well quit rattling those keys, or I'll ask you to bring them up here and lay them down <laughs> because the Lord is not finished yet. Amen. So Amen. It, well, yeah, I. Uh, You're a uh, woman of authority, uh, aren't you? <laughs> you know, often a lot of people when I have someone come and minister. Or, or uh, lead worship at, you know, one of the meetings and stuff, uh, the conferences, they'll, you know, ask me, well, uh, how much time do you want me to do? And uh, I'll say, no, I'll say, I'll, every time, be led by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. There's, yes. We don't put a time limit on God in our services. That's true. Because we, we wait upon Him. We want to see the fruition because we know when Jesus walks in, something is going to happen. That's right. I believe it with all my heart. And, and Hagar, she was so blinded by the anxiety, she could not see what's in front mm -hmm. of her. And we do that many times, don't we? I, We're so blinded mm -hmm. by the anxiety. So today, if you're blinded by anxiety today and you're feeling overwhelmed, Jesus. turn to Jesus. Ask him to open your eyes because your answer to your miracle could be right before your very eyes today. And your victory is just on the horizon. Your peace is on the horizon. Won't you do that today, my friends? So until next time, I want you to walk in love and I want you to keep your faith. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide. AAA Enterprises and the viewers. If you would like to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee 37148. 